to the greatest of the greatest, a podcast that you never knew you needed, with interviews from people you have never met, or maybe you have once or twice, asking questions and knowing more than you want to know about them. You are listening to Full Buddy Cast. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for listening to the episode of Full Buddy Cast. Full Buddy Cast presents. You know, this is this is turning into the uh, Billy Custolo, Billy Saint Custolo, Nikki Saint, Nikki Saint Custolo, Billy Painter. Billy Painted Horse. This is turning Beelzebub, into the Chronicles. The Chronicles. So we're going to get the through the, uh, the sponsors, and then we're going to dive right in for episode three. If you uh, need to catch up, go backwards, whatever you're listening to. We're on Spotify. We're on iHeartRadio. We're on Apple Podcasts. We're on Facebook. We're everywhere we're that you're mom. listening to. Yes, you can. <laughs> we're just probably not on iTunes. You can probably, Don't or no, we're not iTunes. What's the t- touch tone? Touch tunes. You can't play us on the jukebox. That's the only thing you can, you can't play us. I think that's the one place you can't play us. We're even on YouTube. Um, all right. So with that said, we got Cole Street Brewery, 1627 Cole Street, Enumclaw, Washington. Go in. Say hi to the brewmaster, Sean, and uh, take yourself in. Uh, show him that you've taken yourself in on social media with the hashtag of Full Buddy Cast, and he'll give you 15% off your drinks. Go to Bordeaux Wine Bar right down the street as well. Google it. You guys can Google or, or duck, duck, go it or freaking do whatever you need to do to get there. Uh, also, uh, take yourself in, show your server Full Buddy Cast, uh, and then go to Mazelon and Eden Claw. Say hi to Andy, uh, and then he'll also hook you up as well. If you're at home and you don't like to go out, Door dash yourself something from O Chef Country Kitchen in Enumclaw. Uh, it's located if you want to drive there and you don't want to, you know, maybe you don't want to go to some place. You're in your sweat, so you're going to show up and just order there. Uh, say hi to Dan there. It's in the parking lot of the Claw over uh, by where uh, the Pickle Factory Road used to be or is currently, but it's now not Pickle Factory because it's getting redone. We've got Patreon members that I'm going to shout out real quick. Go to patreon.com, type in full buddy cast, and you can just do it. Five bucks, buy me a drink. Buy me a drink a month. I'll take that. Uh, we got Kellen Hall, Holograph, Adam Kenny Art, Seth Loop, Cassie Spencer, Amanda Keating, Shekinah Sarver, Jared Skelly, Homer Robertson, Ben Illman, Jamie Roberts, Jamie Kenny, Apollo Doodle, Jackson Zyduk, Sasha Carey Lynn, Thomas Savageo, Anthony Wright, Cameron Stratton, Katri Hoban, Homer the Vet. Jackie Van Hoof and Dan Coot Snyder. And we've got our very own. Let me say it again. Let me redo this. By the way, guys, I picked today. I didn't really pick today. This usually works well for our schedule. But I picked today because it's a beautiful day in Enumclaw, Washington. And I just wanted Billy Costello, Nikki St. Costello, Billy Painted Horse. I want him to drive on down here, see that big, beautiful mountain, and think to himself, I have to move to Enumclaw as soon as possible. He mentioned it last episode, but I needed to give him a little bit more. Oh, I definitely, definitely need to find a place out here. I need to find me a sugar mama that can help me <laughs> move out here. <laughs> How you been, yeah, Billy? Hey, hey, if uh, you're going to order that DoorDash because you don't like to leave your house and all, just, just do a couple of courtesies. Yeah. Open some windows and let that place air out because you probably stink. And while you're at it, go wash your funky ass before the delivery boy shows up. Dude. You know, I mean, and and tip the guy because you know delivering food to people just sucks. I mean, people suck, but I mean delivering food to them sucks. You know, twice I, as hard. So I don't think I did it. But I did it with pizza down in Arizona. I'll never deliver. I'll I'll never do that again, dude. I'll, yeah. I I swear I'll I'll sell fentanyl on the corner before <laughs> I do that again. No, I'm just kidding. Hey, I don't think you know this, but. Most of the full buddy casters do. Maybe you don't. Huh. So my wife started doing DoorDash delivering. Uh, she's a uh, well, I can't. I don't really. We don't really talk where she works, but she's a store director, right? right. And uh, and so uh, anyway, she started to uh, deliver DoorDash for fun on the side, just to make a little extra side money. And I lost a bet to her. This is about you know eight months ago. And I'm like, and she's like, you got a DoorDash, and I'm like, I don't want a DoorDash, I don't want to do it. I already got my you know forty hours a week job. I'm good, you know. I got the podcast going. I, I so I, I know I lost the bet. I signed up. I'm addicted, man. Making and, money, like and crazy, that huh? is exactly yeah. You're yeah. right about that, man. You get some funky people out there, and uh, and, and so for me, 
it's like a you know I'll throw it on for for an hour maybe once a day uh, or you know every other day and then. Uh, you know, it's it's my Vegas money. So it, it, all the money that I make from that, just I just end up frittering it away down in Vegas. And, That's right. You yeah. just went down to Vegas for your mom's birthday. My mom's huh? 70th. 70th, yeah. right on. Good, good, good memory. Good time, huh? Yeah. yeah. Awesome time. Uh, you know, what, what we can... Uh, this, I, I, Did you get any whores? Nope. No. Nope. Nope. That didn't. Not for my mom's 70th. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was, I was like when I'd sit in Hard Rock, and they, you know, be sitting there at uh, at the Hard Rock drinking, and you know, probably on something, couldn't go to sleep, you know, just sort of bored. Everybody else has left, and I'm just there, sitting at the Hard Rock. Yeah. And girl comes up and goes, "Hi, hi, you want some company?" I'm, sure. <laughs> uh, you want to go somewhere? And I'm like, oh. Oh yeah, <laughs> like that. Like how now much? Now I she, see why you're. I'm like, no, nah, I'm looking for the free stuff. She says, "Honey, you're in Vegas. Nothing's free." <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, I know. That's pretty much what I'm saying. Is I'm not looking for anything." <laughs> 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 like, uh, you know. Yeah. But um, yeah, I tell you. Yeah. Yeah. So good. last week uh, we kind of we last got some, week it's been it's oh been a couple a weeks, weeks ago a few weeks ago yeah. Well, man, you're younger than me. You should have a better memory That's than me. True. Hundred percent. Uh, we yeah, it's our, been a few weeks. Our cliffhanger was the prosecutor's office in Arizona. Or not, not prosecutors. No, 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 no. no, no. no. It was DA. 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 Sorry. DA was hot on our ass. The DA. So. We also got to get a baby update, and then yeah. we got to figure out also a uh, grandbaby update, I should say, yeah, and then yeah, got yeah. got to figure out this trip uh, for your yeah, sister's wedding. Sister. Yeah, going garden party attire shopping with my son-in-law. <laughs> I, he's he's developing my son my son-in-law Victor Rodriguez. In fact, his family doesn't live too far from here. Oh wow! Yeah, just up the road a little ways. Um, he uh, I called him up, asked him if he would give me a hand because he's got a really good eye for fashion. He, and my daughter and him send pictures to me. They'll go to uh, Emerald Downs or you know yeah. be in Hawaii or some other function. But they always they're getting dressed up, Halloween parties, whatever, and just always just just to the nines, you know. And I'm like, hmm, the guy's got a good sense of style, so. Called him up, said, "Hey, man, I gotta go to my sister's wedding, Maria's wedding, and you know they know Maria and all." So, I said, "What the fuck is garden party attire?" Yeah, what is <laughs> like, that? What they? What do you say? All right, think Easter. Think like a okay. tan jacket and a lavender shirt. Okay, you know, and maybe white slacks or something. You know, mimosas. But, but and... um, very. I, to to me, it's very. Um, I want to say metrosexual. Um, <laughs> Uh, it, it's very, it's very, it's very urban style. Younger men, um, definitely this uh, newer, you know, younger generation, not maybe, maybe millennials or something. I don't know. Um, I, I like to think that back when I was married, my ex-wife and I, we did some she, a lot of culturing things. You know, yeah. things, you know, uh, dinners at nice restaurants and wine tastings and stuff like that. But um, I'm trying to recall if I ever had to dress a certain, you know, style. You know. I feel like you still put your flair to it, though. Uh, perhaps, perhaps yeah. I, I'll find out. But with with Victor, knowing his, that's why I called him because I'm like, I got an ace in in the hole. Like, I, you know, I don't even have to step out. I just make one call and boom, I'm set. Oh, sorry. And uh, so yeah, so uh, I gave him a call and he he's on it. He's developing a game plan for us, and I guess uh, probably in the next week or two here, we're gonna go shopping and get me my uh, pimping big brother giving his sister away at the wedding. <laughs> garden party attire. Then you gotta oh, have a cane. Well, I'm hoping I look like something out of Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, top like hat, little Johnny cane Depp. Going. Yeah, 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 man. I you like know, that. yeah, for real. Yeah. I, I could do the top hat too. Um, yeah, definitely pump the top hat. Yeah, dude, you got the long locks. You got the beard. Everything looks good with the long hair, man. Yeah, so you know, I feel like this beard thing. is a, a, getting a little more fuller every time I see. Oh yeah, you. oh yeah. This is the I call this the Karma beard. I started growing this uh, right when Karma, my uh, pit bull, died. I just haven't shaved since she died. Really, and and yeah, so how long ago was that? Uh, December twenty second. Oh, so, so wow, so so yeah, so this this about this, almost five months, almost yeah, yeah, four yeah, four months, yeah, four months. Oh yeah, four. Yeah, coming up on four months. Oh no, what's the day? Yeah, yesterday. Yesterday was four months. Wow. And so, uh, what? So, are you? What? Like, what's the plan? Are you going Duck Dynasty? Are you going? Oh, I'm going. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm growing it until I'm done mourning. And gotcha. Much okay. as I love that dog, I could mourn for a while. Um, gotcha. You know, I carry it well. I can still smile. I can still laugh. Yeah. But, uh, I lost my best friend, man. It sucks. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm focused right now. Like I saw a dog uh, yesterday nine-year-old uh australian shepherd 
that uh, girl wanted to give away. And I, st- I was like, for a second, I was like, oh, yeah, girl, Aussie, Aus- Aus- you know, miniature Aussie. Aus- and then I was like, no, man, it's just, you know, nine years. Not yet. Like, yeah, but yeah. the other thing is nine years, you've had her for nine years. Like that separation's going to, that's going to be a lot to deal with. And then, I don't know, she lived for five more years, eight more years. Like mm-hmm. how, how long does she live for? Because um, Aussie's a live at about 14, 15. Mm-hmm. So like, we get about five, six years, fall in love with this dog and go right through go it. Through like, it no, nah, man, no, nah, I'm a. And then I'm like, and I got this whole yard project I want to get done. I want to get everything done before my uh, dogs and my uh, grandsons go running around in the yard. So, so then, so anyhow, as, as, but, we uh, learn, as we learn more about you, here's the thing, guys, the listeners that have been joining. By the way, thank you so much for listening. Thanks for being a part of it. Thanks for the feedback. You know, I know that uh, that you post it everywhere, and, and people yeah, will yeah, people yeah. will comment. And thanks for the feedback on that. Now uh, send money. <laughs> I'm just. <laughs> I'm just kidding Not but really, i kind of like the transition okay. that we, we've kind of naturally started Call doing me. where it's been you know we hear some stories about the back you know background but then we're also hearing your current events current life current views yeah and i think one fun thing uh it, it's always a good warm-up i'm trying to I'm looking i am the spectrum man I'm just, you know. <laughs> well i'm trying to i'm trying to find this uh i have rapid uh basically questions oh okay. uh and just to kind of people kind of get a little more insight sure. into you so i'm sure, i'm sure, just, sure. i'm just gonna go off the top of the head it's gonna be fast you know one word two word answers okay Absolutely. all right so wow, i've done this before yeah let's do it. okay <laughs> okay about 250 bucks say, an your, hour. say your abc's backwards <laughs> and be on one foot no i'm just kidding on that okay so tell me about your mother <laughs> uh favorite ice cream chocolate favorite uh coffee flavor coffee flavor. are you a, are I'm, i am i am a cream and sugar old school just yeah just, yeah just how many strong packets black if you're oh, at the well, denny's. If I, oh if i'm at the if i'm at the denny's five six seven packets uh, <laughs> uh, i tell i tell them hey uh can you bring me a bucket of sugar and a shovel to <laughs> dig it out with and uh, they laugh, and I go, "No, really." I go, "You waste, you're wasting your time with all the sweet and low." I said, "I'm going to go through those four <laughs> packs and that <laughs> little thing there, and I'm going to be calling you back over for another whole thing." I'm so you might as well just go ahead and bring my, just bring me a bowl. So what's your so then, bowl of sugar? I like to have I like to have coffee with my sugar. So we're gonna hang we're gonna hang with the breakfast right now. So, okay. So uh, scrambled eggs and that's bacon. What I was say, oh man, and I tell you what, I hate McDonald's. That shit's poison. Bunch of chemicals, but. God, that bacon, egg, and cheese McGriddle is cracked. <laughs> Damn. It's good stuff. You know, dude. I mean, I, look, look. A chocolate shake and a bacon, egg, and cheese McGriddle in the morning will get your hypoglycemic <laughs> level so fucking high, man, you'll probably see airplane pilots. Oh, my But, God. I it's, mean, you know, oh. like, I, I just, that is, oh, man, I don't know what they did. I don't know what they put in there, but they hit it with that one. Um, but I stay away from it. I don't eat that crap because, um, like I said, it's terrible for you. So you stay home. You stay home at home. You're gonna I, make I, breakfast. I scramble. I scramble my eggs and make my bacon. Uh, toast my marble rye bread and then uh, make a bacon uh, scrambled egg sandwich, like maybe sandwich. some mayonnaise or sam or a sandwich uh, spread sauce, whatever that shit's called. But nice. yeah, but Play- you know, nothing too nothing too fancy. I'm I'm a simple old country boy from from Richmond. This Virginia. is rapid okay. fire, Bill. Okay. I got oh, I got a sorry step sorry in. sorry I, I I threw a Kevlar vest in the way there. Okay, go ahead, go right. Right. continue, uh, pull place, the trigger. A place you haven't visited that you want to visit? Hawaii in Australia. A uh, place that you have visited that you wish you never went to. Oh God, Rock Springs, Wyoming. <laughs> now let's dive into that one for a moment. I'm okay with that. I know this is rapid, but I want to hear about this. Well, um, okay. So you've never lived. You you don't know what adrenaline is until you are getting pulled over by the Utah State Police in a rental van with uh, what was it, two pounds of coke and five pounds of weed oh in gosh. the trunk, <laughs> right? Yeah, and no, thank that's... God for your clean cut smooth talking chill as fuck driver and friend morton um who does all the talking and me sitting in the back smiling politely and hands clasped in my lap like a good little sunday school boy uh yeah let me tell you boy because uh whew. um but anyhow i had a friend mikey who lived up there he had moved up there and um god it's rock springs is such a shithole and I'm sorry, people, Rock Springs, I don't mean any offense to you. It's just the city you're in is a shithole. I don't know if it's an individual <laughs> thing or a collective thing, but your city is a shithole. <laughs> um, th- you know what? I-, I saw a thing on uh, a 
podcast or something or some show recently and they were showing like in each state the worst city for like crime and i shit you not wyoming popped up and it went rock springs i was like <laughs> thank you <laughs> it's not my opinion anymore it's fact, fact. <laughs> it's been established <laughs> fuck you rock Springs. no i made a lot of money in rock springs um got lucky because uh, uh a lot of shit. I'll, I'll just a short synopsis on this. Sure. Some guy stole a bunch of money and shit from me. Next thing I know, I got my Mexican my friend in Arizona, you know, you know, associations, yes, yes. Uh, sending up a guy that doesn't speak a word of English. And I'm hacking through conversations with him with my Spanglish. Doing the best you doing can. Doing best I can to explain to him why 6500 in cash and 6500 in product are no longer with me oh. uh, because uh, we left it in the safe and when we came back, the place was broken into and the safe was gone. I found out much later my friend Mikey was in on it, unfortunately. Oh. He, 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 he since died. He wrecked his truck, his 4x4 four four up there, 4 by one night drinking and shit. And oh. So, so I, I, he is forgiven. As Lamb of God and Omuerta says, you are forgiven. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but uh, I was up there and I was making a lot of money, but I just realized like it's just this dry, dirty, just pass through it on your way to Yellowstone or Yosemite kind of uh, town. Um, the only other town that I thought was as just, God, what the fuck do you do here? <laughs> is Rollins, Wyoming, <laughs> on the way to Cheyenne. So, 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 <laughs> so still in Wyoming. So still in Wyoming, man. <laughs> and they, the people are like, why is it the most, the least populated state? Because there's a fucking reason. <laughs> you go there one time, you won't have to ask that question again, I promise. But, uh, yeah, I remember playing mini golf in Cheyenne. I was waiting for somebody to pull up or something. I forget. But, yeah, just Wyoming was... Um, like I said, I made a lot of money there, but it's like it's it's nice. You had to sacrifice it's, a lot. So I, I, like, in um, you know, and I told you about the club where there was a rock and roll club on the right and a strip club on the left, and my friend Mikey was the DJ in the strip club, and all these bands were coming through, and occasionally some of the bands would let me get up on stage and sing, you know, yeah. a song with them, whatever. And um, but yeah, so I'm just setting up shop, just selling, you know, yayo like Scarface up there, and uh. You know, of course, the dancers want to be my friend, and the rock bands are just you know coming there from Minnesota and Nebraska and Colorado and whatever, and they're just they're loving the shit out of me, <laughs> you know. So uh, I won't say it was a terrible time. It's not like I had a horrible time. Um, <laughs> indeed, quite the opposite. But uh, <laughs> but that incident with that person stealing that that ended everything because once that happened. Um, the word got around apparently to the sheriff in that area that about some guy from out of town. And once I had heard that, my mama didn't raise no dummy. Um, once I heard that I had plucked the fl red flag and put it up, you know, right on top of my head, I was like, it's time for me to get the fuck out of Wyoming. Um, was it, so, let me point, tell you, you let me out? tell you, you know what's adventurous? 1992, this is 90, uh, 92, 93, probably 92. It's probably 1992. Um, I'm thinking 91, 92, somewhere in there. It's been a long time. Um, coming through Salt Lake City through the airport with a fanny pack with $9,000 in cash in it <laughs> and throwing it on the belt and it just going through and them not blinking an eye. Like I said, that was 1992. After 2001, after, not after September 11th, like you, you, that shit ain't happening no more. Right. Um, a lot of things you used to be able to do. You used to smoke on the fucking plane. <laughs> <laughs> the, the stewardesses, not the flight attendants, the stewardesses would bring you peanuts and cocktails. And if you were really cute, <laughs> company. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but um, <laughs> you know, it was uh, it, it was an interesting time. I just recall that that I had like I'm just going through the airport, and just throw my fanny pack up there with nine grand in it, and it's like you know, no big deal. 
So you know the the, the the hubris of all that though. The, like I said, I'm never trying to brag. The, right. the, the sad thing about all that is like all I have are the stories to tell. I don't have one penny to show you from anything from back then. <laughs> maybe the, one of these shit tattoos on yeah, me that I, I got covered up. But I mean, yeah, well, no, it's probably covered up by now. Oh. But maybe, maybe her. She's about the only lasting one. All the rest of the crap ones got covered up. But point being, um, yeah, it was uh, it was quite the adventure. Did that, when you got out of Wyoming? Mm-hmm. Uh, was that was that it? Were you done at that point, yeah, well, or were you um, I on got, your way out? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I got back to Arizona. A friend of mine got married, and um, I had to go get my suit and all that. I just remember hanging out. Just not a thinking, garden party wedding. No, no, like. no. This was black tuxedo, all that shit in in, in Phoenix in June. It's brilliant. Um, was it June? Maybe maybe it was a little early. Maybe it was spring, April. So, but anyhow. Um, I just realized, like, man, I just, I'm going to miss all of this if I get caught up. And uh, so, uh, I, God, there's some stories I want to tell you, and I don't want to take too long. So uh, I wanted to sing. I'm a singer, man. I, I, I'm not a drug dealer. I'm a singer, right? I have a purpose. The reason I came to the West Coast was not to be a drug dealer. It was to be a singer. So I realized, okay, dude, make a choice. Keep running dope take the risk fuck that shit get a job you know stay local or whatever you know so little bits of shit so if you do get caught up you know you hopefully just get some probation whatever you know nugget but you're making these big you know like these ain't little boy deals these big deals you're fucking around you know you're gonna find out and you're gonna do 25 to life for some dumb shit so uh i was like you know what yeah let me start looking for a band so i found these guys um Ended up calling ourselves Industrial Slam, and I uh, started singing for him. And that and working at the gym gave me a purpose. But unfortunately, as I started singing in the band, we started getting popular. This has happened with most of the bands I sing with. I get in them, we, we practice for a while, we start playing out, and then all of a sudden we start getting really popular really fast because people are like, damn, that's a pretty good singer. And I always have a good ear for the bands I sing for, so I don't sing for shit bands. So I'm like, you know, <laughs> we start blowing up. Next thing I know... It's back to the days like when I was going to the strip clubs and I was the yay yo man. It was free drinks and, you know. So now I'm with the band and I'm bringing in people to these clubs and the bartenders all know me and like, hey, drinks on the house, Nikki, you know, it's all you, but So I was, I, I just got back into drinking. So I got away from all the dope and now I'm starting to drink again. And um, it's unfortunate because it cost me a lot of uh, valuable years with my daughter that I can't ever get back. Um, but I do recall when I left Phoenix and moved up to Seattle because my friend's band up here wanted me to move up here and sing for him after Industrial Slam's band room got broken into and cleaned out by some <laughs> meth addicts or something. Um, but uh, I remember my mother telling me when I called her to say, hey, I'm moving back to Seattle. This is 94. April of 94 she says she felt like God lifted a weight off of her oh. she goes when you got out of Phoenix she goes I just felt like God was telling me he's going to be okay now because she says I don't know what you were doing in Phoenix she goes but I just knew it was bad and in hindsight I told her like yeah mom you're you know moms know <laughs> I guess is the point of that so you said back to Seattle was there a point that you were in Seattle for okay. a bit so so the reason for our story today. Yes. Thank you, sir. Wait, wait a second. That's how I see this. We should work out. Oh, my God, man. We're like peanut butter and jelly over here and shit. Um, yeah, it's amazing. So um, I never had any inclination or desire to ever come to Seattle, Washington. Heard it rained all the time. Not a big rain guy. Um, love that Arizona sun. But... Uh, during my time there, now this is the first go around. This is after the Axel thing in February of '87, um, or I'm sorry, February of '88. Wow, yeah, we're '88. Okay, so now that's around that time. I've been in Phoenix for a little over a year. Had come from LA, got there in January, met all these people, met Jay and Gina. Um, go back to Richmond for a month, work at this job. Friends call me one Saturday morning. I just like. God, anymore so i'm back to phoenix so june you know late may june i'm back in phoenix okay i'm back i'm gonna go get a job so I go get a job at a roofing company <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> and uh i get I, I get i do one week yep 
man, that's another job I'll never do again. Uh, I'll give Hummers on the street corner. I, I'm, so, I'm never fucking doing that again. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I get the paycheck, and Jane and I sit up, and we start turning and, and burning, and we're just making money. Like I said, we, I just get into this, let's be serious about this mode, and we just clicked. And we just, you know, me being social butterfly, I'm out meeting everybody. And so we start making enough money. We make enough money to be able to move out of the apartment that he was in when I first came in, came along. Um, we know this girl. She's, I forget, I, I, I honestly, I don't, I can't remember how we came about meeting her, but I'm sure it was through somebody we knew um, through our business. And anyhow, but she was a wonderful lady. She is uh, divorced. She had a couple of kids. And I'm not going to give her name for the sake of, I don't know if she's out there, um, but um, I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll just make up some initials. Let's just call her KC. Okay. Okay. We'll just call her KC. Remind me of that. <laughs> I'll write that down hey, so I, I don't forget it. I got a billion KC Kane things back here. That yeah. Yeah. That's well. what I said. I was like, just like, that guy works. <laughs> so we'll just call her KC. Uh, <laughs> thank you for playing along. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you picking up what I'm putting down. Um, anyhow, she is a wonderful lady. Um, uh, ex-husband was kind of a prick, you know, you know, the whole, I'll give you money when I feel like it. And so she would struggle from time to time. And of course she worked in real estate and you know, there was feast and famine. And so she would come to us and from time to time we would give her money. You know, she would get fronts from us, you know, cause she liked to do a little bit. She wasn't a, she liked to do a little bit, but we would give her money from time to time. She, you know, say something about, yeah, my, you know, I, need to get groceries for the kids i don't know and we were just like here let me give her money we go here go buy groceries for the kids and she goes well i'm gonna pay you back i'm like don't worry about it she's like no no write it down so we wrote it down on this ode list jay had this ode list i'm oh, sorry jay has this ode list so he writes it down 70 you know just kc 70 and um no keep that in mind because that's a saving grace for us so anyhow, um, we're we're going around and around. Things get me. Jay and Gina start having issues because hot chicks are coming over. Jay's wanting to fuck them. Um, Gina, she's not down with it, and she's losing her shit. Um, it, it really put a mental strain on her, and I really wish that it hadn't been that way for her. But anyhow, um, they need a break, so they're like, "We're taking off." They take off and they go stay at a hotel somewhere, or a motel, whatever. Um, down the ways in Phoenix somewhere. And, um, oh, it's, I should say this Casey, she had helped us get into our townhouse that I told you we lived in there, um, up off in North Phoenix off of Thunderbird and I 17, um, off of a little road called Emil Zola, Emil Zola drive or music. Yeah. Um, and it's a little townhouse community, nice townhouse. She helped us get in there. So that's how we knew her professionally. But we also knew her personally. And when I had a breakup with a girlfriend, she let me stay at her house, drive her Volvo all over the place, jamming on the Scorpions and shit on her car stereo, you know, and uh, just dealing with my heartbreak and everything. But she let me stay at her place. She went out of town for a little bit, let me stay and watch her house and drive her car and everything. She entrusted me with her home and her car. Um, so we had a bond with this, Casey. And... Uh, <laughs> We're getting bigger and bigger, and then I uh, meet this guy. Um, I'll just call him, um, we'll just call him Polly. Polly, yeah. Polly, dude. Polly. Um, anybody that knows the story knows who I'm referring to. Polly, dude. Polly. Um, he, he's a singer, and he's singing with my friend's band, and he moves in with us. And in fact, he's the one that introduced me to the young Hispanic kid whose uncle was La M.A. and uh, introduced us, you know. So that's how all that all came about. So he's living with us, and he's envious. He wants to be a part. He wa he sees the big dogs, right? He thinks it's easy. He think he wants to be in this. He he doesn't want to be a little guy. He doesn't want to have to wait for the scraps to fall off the table. He wants to go out and make his own meal. He goes out and he makes a deal without our knowledge, without our permission. It's a half key deal with an undercover DEA agent. He's He's fucked, um, but he's not because he turns and he knows who our guy is. And he turns on that dude 
because he knew the kid. And so, you know, of course, so I get a phone call, Nikki, let me preface a few nights before, or maybe a week before Jay had called me and said, they got pinched by DEA outside their motel room when he and Gina took off. Um, they took my briefcase, 3500 cash, um, a little nugget of weed, a little, just a tiny little bud, and uh, some of this fucking peanut butter bathtub crank that was just absolute shit. Um, but that was it, but they took 3500 and the list of IOUs. <laughs> so so okay so you're seeing the story coming around okay you're getting you're, you're, you're yes. putting the pieces together okay so um this just a few nights later he goes and makes this dumbass unpermitted deal and uh gets popped next thing i know my phone's blown the house phone because this, this is 1988 dude this is like landlines you yeah. know <laughs> pagers and landlines um phone's blown up i get a call Get rid of everything. So I become a whirling dervish. I, I'm the Tasmanian devil. Like I'm showers on, triple beams in the fucking bathtub, <laughs> toilets just oh, so swallowing, just you know, lots of money. And uh, I get everything out pretty much. I'm like, okay, well, good luck, you know, with anything now. And then phone rings. Hello. Nikki, it's KC. Hey, what's up? Oh my God. So I just got a call from, uh, uh, no, I, I don't want to name him. So what shall we call him? We'll call him, uh, Kane. We'll call him, uh, Kane. Kane? Casey yeah, Kane. we'll call it. Yeah, there you go. There you go. We'll call him Kane. There you go. So Kane, <laughs> Kane, the, uh, the head of this, uh, this group of T. Uh, now they had stolen the thirty five hundred dollars from Jay. Um, several weeks prior to this, several weeks, we found out later on that this girl who was one of our regulars, her brother got and busted tiny little amount, and she had offered to set us up, and she had brought in. So I was going to see my girlfriend, gorgeous little girl named Jennifer, who lived over in Paradise Valley. God, she was gorgeous. <laughs> uh, but I was going to see her, and. They come in as I'm about to leave, and she introduces me to this woman, beautiful Hispanic woman, gorgeous Hispanic woman. Um, she says, hi, this is Nikki. He's like, this is something. And I was like, well, nice to meet you. I'm, I'm taking off, and you know, so I leave. Well, come to find out later that that girl was supposed to come in, flirt with me, and kind of oh, get okay. to be okay. with me, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. she was going to be like, right there just watching everything yeah right and um and then set me up and bust me. so um but fortunately i'm like no, I, I got a woman so i split anyhow she's uh there and i forget jay and them did something but uh the girl never saw anything she never saw shit and so the girl that was we could tell she was nervous as shit mm. and something's up but um Figured, she, you know, she was nervous because of her, this new person. I forget. I, I'm leaving. Jay sends her off. But apparently, um, the girl was there long enough to bug the place. So, during that time, though, a lot of chaotic shit had been going on in the townhouse. Jay and Gina had been gone to the motel. And I was always out and about. I was hardly ever home, dude. I was, I was not one to sit around, the, mm -hmm. you know. Um so uh the phone rings and uh KC says, Nikki, I just got a call from Kane. He's asking me why my initials and a number are on a piece of paper that they confiscated from Jay's briefcase. And I went, That's the money we gave you for groceries. You told us to write it down. She goes, Oh, that's right. Shit, I forgot. She goes, okay. She goes, well, good. She goes, I knew it was for a good reason. She goes, I told him you guys are good boys and they need he needs to leave you guys alone. She goes, but um, they're on to you. And I said, yeah, I kind of figured that. And I said, the place is bugged? She goes, yeah, how did you know? I said, 
that hot Hispanic chick that they sent in here with so and so a couple week or uh, a week or so ago. Yeah, she goes, "You knew that?" I said, "My suspicions were up." And I was like, but anyhow, I said, like, I was, dude, I was so cocky. I've got this. I've got no, 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 nothing like the demure, you know, reserved, restrained person I am now. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, I was known to carry this uh, Ruger Super Black Hawk 44 Magnum with the eight inch barrel. Sing, you know, it's a single action revolver. It's a cannon. And why well, you could take a man's head clean off. <laughs> Sorry, Clint. Um, and uh, I said, well, I'm on the phone with her. And I said, well, Casey, you tell him this. I said, you tell old Kane there that uh, if I, I go, if I see him coming, I said, I'm breaking this cannon out. And I said, and I'm going down in a blaze of glory. I said, because I'm not going to prison the rest of my life. I said, so it's going to be a shootout. She's like, Nikki, shut up. What are you doing? I'm like, nope. I said, it's death or prison. I'm like, no, I'll, I'll take my chances. <laughs> and I'm 21 years old, dude. Yeah. Um, full of myself. Um, uh, full of stupid. But <laughs> she goes, Oh my God, Nikki. She goes, no. and I said, No. And I said, I said, I'm not kidding. I said, so I said, but everything is cleaned out of here. I said, we're not going to do anything. We can't do anything. We just flushed everything that we had to make money with. I said, so there is nothing literally for us to do. And she goes, she had a call. You know, back then you had the call waiting, you know? Yeah. So she had call waiting and, and I hear it go click, click. And she goes, that's probably him. Hang on. And she clicks over and she's like, clicks right back. I'm going to call you back. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like, and I wait, a few minutes pass, phone rings, and I, yeah. She says, okay, here's the deal. He says, they won't mess with you. Oh, no, this is what I told her. I'm sorry, let me go back. Before yeah. she, before he called, I said, I'm talking to her, and I said, and I'm telling you this, Casey, I said, if they come down here, I'm going out, and I said, if by some stroke of luck they're able to take me alive, I said, I swear my first call will not be to any lawyer. I said, it'll be to that realty company, to so-and-so that works next to you to let her know what her fucking husband is doing on those overtime hours he <laughs> says he's pulling. And she's like, because she's having, been having an affair with him for a while. Yeah. And I know this. And this is my ace. Like, this is yeah. like, all right, dude, let's play. Yeah. And um, then the phone clicks. And she's like, oh, my God, Nikki. She goes, she calls me back. She says, I've never heard him that mad in my end. She goes, since I've known him. She goes, oh, my God, he is so fucking furious. She says, okay, here's the deal, Nikki. She says, please stop talking. Please don't say anything else. I know you're pissed off, but please stop talking. <laughs> I'm like, all right, Casey, go ahead. You guys, close down, clean up, get the fuck out of Arizona, don't come back. I said, we're already cleaned out, shut down. I said, Jay's talking to his sister in Seattle, we'll see what happens. I said, and I said, I kind of want to go check it out anyhow, so I said, but uh, I'll come back to fucking Arizona any fucking time I like, and if he wants to try to stop me. By all means, Sheriff, go right ahead. You know, <laughs> and uh, she knew what I meant because I'm like Billy the Kid over here. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, go ahead, Sheriff. Yeah, you know, let's let's do that dance. But um, anyhow, that that got us out of uh, because they were going to swarm on us. They were literally going to kick our doors in, guns out, because uh, they knew there was firearms. They knew there was, you know, they knew all kinds. Of, fortunately, we didn't have any like Rottweilers or pit bulls or anything like that. But you know, it was like I said, man, we were just two young little rocker kids. We weren't, we weren't trying to hurt anybody, right? We weren't trying to be big tough guys or any shit like that. But me, I'm from a, 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 an environment, a, a raising where I had to fight. A lot. But you're also in the war on drugs, like, era. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, full-blown. And, I mean, we're literally, the shit we're getting is Pablo Escobar shit. Yeah. Like, that's what we're we're selling. I remember one trip up to Wyoming, dude, when he gave me the shit. He told me, he's like, Nikki, you step on this, man. He goes, 50-50. And I go, what? Because he knew, I was like, I, I really didn't like, you know, 
messing with this shit too much if I didn't have to. Like I, I don't. I, I'd rather have customers come back because of the quality over and over than to try to make the money off of them in one sale. Right. You know. I'm like I'm. Oh, sorry. So I'm I'm a smarter businessman than that. So, uh, uh, he gave me this shit one time, ninety seven point five percent, dude. Scared the fuck out of me, bro. You you don't want to touch that. That's like fentanyl. I mean, you don't want to touch that shit, dude. Because you you, you, you fucking uh, paramedics and shit <laughs> getting called. But uh, yeah, man, that, that was crazy shit back then. But so anyhow, um. Head up to Seattle. Yeah, we head up to Seattle. So my my friend Jay's sister, um, she works at Cairo Radio. She works in the sales department, I believe, and um, has a house over in West Seattle and um, right there at California and 49th. And so that was my first introduction to Seattle was uh, living in West Seattle. And uh, first weed I ever bought was right there at 2nd and Pine. Um from a black dude who gave us weed and it was nice and stinky and skunky. We were like, woo! Um, but, uh, yeah, I remember the first time I ever bought like real good skunk weed in Seattle, it was Second and Pine Street at like <laughs> nine o'clock at night. And people are like, you're crazy. I was like, yeah, I wouldn't recommend trying to do that shit nowadays, but, you know, I wouldn't recommend trying to do it back then yeah, in 19. Yeah. But yeah, that was, uh, that was October of 88. And, uh, so I get up here, um, now, in, in my high school days, I worked at Sam Goody's back in v- Richmond, Virginia. So I had that experience. And then when I was in Los Angeles, even though I was homeless, I was still applying for jobs. And I got a job at B. Dalton Software, et cetera, one of the first ones in the country. That was when they were selling yeah. you know, software and computers and stuff. Um, and then I got a job at Spencer's because it was holiday. It was like I got there in October um, of 86. So, you know, it was Christmas season coming up there. Hi. So I got the job at Spencer's, the job at B. Dalton, and I went over to Musicland. And and because that's Sam Goody's Music Land, same company, and, and got there. Um, so I have plenty of experience. Come up here to Seattle, Third and Pike, which is now a Starbucks. Um, that Starbucks though was Music Land. Everybody that knows Seattle back in the day. They know that that was the Music Land store right there at Third and uh, Pike. So I go in, I apply, I get the job. My assistant manager's name is Patrick. He got big bushy red hair. Um, I guess he's from over on the island from Bainbridge. Like a lot of these uh, rock and roll legends that I'm about to talk about came from, a lot of them come from that, you know, part. If they ain't from East Side Bellevue, like Queens, right? They're from the fucking island, like uh, uh, Mother Love Bone and Jet and I think uh, some of the guys from Alice in Chains, if I'm not mistaken. But anyhow, uh, I get up here and I get the job there, working there a few weeks. And Patrick knows, you know, I'm a singer from Arizona. Yeah, so I understand this is, uh, this is winter time it was probably november december of uh, 1988 and uh sitting there all of a sudden this guy comes walking in with a long leather duster and long blonde hair like mine and hot little brunette chick on his arm patrick goes hey what's up andy he comes over he goes andy he goes I want you to meet my he goes meet our new uh, employee nikki he says he's a singer he's just moved up from arizona he's like hey how you doing man talk he goes yeah, he goes, you checked, you got a chance to check out my band yet? I go, who's that? He goes, Mother Love, we call Mother Love Bone. I'm like, no. He goes, yeah, he goes, they got it here in the store, man. You should check, have a, Patrick open it up and let you check it out. I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll, give, I'll give it a listen, man. And so uh, I said, you let me know if you hear any bands that need a singer. He's like, absolutely, bro. He goes, I will. He goes, well, you know, welcome to Seattle, man. And it's cool as shit. And then he goes, this is my girlfriend, Zanna. He goes, yeah, you know, it's uh Chloe don't know better. That's that's Chloe. Zanna danced as uh, her name dancing name was Chloe. Um I, I'm still friends with Zanna. Zanna's a beautiful lady. Um anyhow, uh she worked at uh, Fantasy Unlimited right there at First and Pike, which back then they sold like, you know, uh metal, heavy metal, cool shit for heavy metal guys to wear and you know, shit like that. But um that was the first friend I made up here, Andy. And then uh, I would see him later on. But one of the last time, the the very last time I saw him, and this is a story I'll leave you with. I know we're running a little long here. Um, so when I first moved up here, I met these guys. Uh, I was over in West Seattle one night at, uh, oh, God, the keg, I think it was, or something like that, in Westwood Village, and there was an open mic. And I went up there, and I sang, and I sang Ice Cream Man by Van Halen. 
And these guys came up and said, hey, man, you know, we need a singer in our band. So this guy, Frank Parker, had a band called Moniker and asked me if I'd sing. So I did. And I hung out with these guys for a little bit. Got to meet these guys, a lot of friends that he knew. A lot of dudes in West Seattle there, a lot of bands. One of the bands called Black is Black, which I thought was one of the most phenomenal bands I ever heard up here. Incredible musicians. Guys would lock themselves. They were all rich boys, too, from Bainbridge, I think. But, uh, they would lock themselves in their band room and drop acid and, and just sit there all weekend, just trip on acid and write music, right? And every one of them could play the other instruments. They could all, like the drummer could play the bass and the guitar and so on. Um, incredible. But uh, anyhow, Frank takes me to Hollywood Underground one night. This is a club down there at uh, Second and uh, I think Washington or something like that, but right there in Pioneer Square. And it was called the Hollywood Underground. And I'm in there and uh, Black is Black is getting ready to play with a band I think called Dead Flowers. And um, all of a sudden here comes this band and there's a stir. And I hear all these people, hey, what's going on, guys? And everybody's just like, hey, what's up? Turn around and uh, Frank goes, Nikki goes, let me introduce you to these guys. Because there's some friends of ours. They got a band called Alice in Chains. He says, this is Lane, and this is Jerry, and this is Mike, and this is uh, Sean. And I'm like, how you doing, guys? And they're like, hey, this is Nikki. He just moved up from Arizona. He's he's uh, singing for us right now. All right, on, man. I'm like, welcome, dude, you know. And uh, that was the first time I met him. And then, of course, there's Alki days, you know, like a day to day, like today, man. It's a perfect day to be on Alki. Everybody that lives up here knows, man, on a 70-some degree day with the sun out, man, you know Alki is the place to be. So back then it was, and right there at Pepper Docks. So where that little pizza place is across the street from Pepper Docks, uh, you sh that was a house. And there was this redheaded dude from Boston that lived there, and he'd throw the killer's parties, man. And he'd have me and friends, whatever. We'd go over to the beach, just like, hey, girls, having a party over here. You want to come over? You know? <laughs> we would just recruit. <clears throat> but uh, I, I was hanging out with the guys at the clubs at shows. I was seeing them on Alki, you know, kicking the hacky sack around and shit with Soundgarden and fucking, you know, Alice in Chains. Because every, everybody's just hanging out there. I mean, that's just what we did. Um Anyhow, during that time, another story, uh, to lead you back, just so you know, I'm a singer, and I've been singing all my life. My father was a musician, so I, it's not like I started out, you know, when I was 18. But uh, I get up here, and I'd heard, like, Jeff Tate from Queensryche was the thing at the time, and I'm just all about, man, I want to sing, I want to sing, I want six octaves. And so uh, he goes, uh, a friend of mine goes, dude, Maestro Kyle's over on Alki. Uh, you should call him up, see if you can get an audition. But Nikki... Don't be upset if he doesn't take you because that dude is so good. Everybody that he trains and teaches are pretty much rock stars. Like like all the people that he's given less to, they're all like major singers. So he's so wanted, you know, sought after that. He somebody said that he picks like one out of every hundred people that tries wow. to sit down and and so my hand to God and my hand on my mother's and daughter's eyes, I swear to you what I'm about to tell you is the truth. I told you before, I don't lie. I don't right. need to. Everything that happened, happened. So I make the appointment. I go over and I sit down. Now, Maestro Kyle is a portly man. Kind of, to me, he looks like he, him and Ben Franklin would have got along <laughs> splendidly. They, they, they would have looked alike. So, so he was kind of bald, but he had the, the th uh, thinning uh, salt and pepper, grayish, whitish hair, long ponytail. Right, pull down his back. These bifocal glasses, just like Ben Franklin, yeah. yeah. Um, and he he brings me to his house there on uh, Alki. Right, you know, you can see the water and everything. He takes me in. There's a piano right there, and he sits me down. He talks to me for a minute, asks me about my musical knowledge and history, and all. I said, you know, I grew up singing, blah blah blah. I play saxophone in school, and my dad's a musician, and blah blah blah. I sing in the church. He says, okay. He says, well. I usually tell students, you know, the people that sit down with me, because I tell them, if you have a good ear and a bad voice, I can work with that. He says, but if you have a bad ear, it doesn't matter how good your voice is. He says, if you can't hear tone, intonation, key, pitch, that's hard to get around. I said, okay, I understood. He says, but it sounds to me like you've played music, so you understand what I'm saying. I said, yes, sir. So we sat there and we started playing scales, and I'm just... La 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 You know, and just keep doing the scales. And we do this for a couple of minutes. And then he stops. And, and he'd asked me earlier what I, my goals were. And I was like, I want to be as good as Jeff Tate. And I swear to you, Travis, he stops. He turns and he looks at me. And he says, Nikki, 
son, I would love to have you as my student. You have a beautiful voice and an amazing ear. He says, you are so pitch perfect on every note. He says, I can tell you have musical training, son. He goes, and I would love to have you as a, uh, a student. He says, and Nikki, I'll tell you this. You say you want to be as good as Jeff. Son, when I'm done with you, you'll sound better than him. You're a better singer than he was when he came in here. And I can hear the potential in you and I can hear what you're doing wrong. I can have you fixed in two or three lessons. I tell most of my students after five or six lessons, most people will be able to see, will be able to hear a noticeable difference in their ability, performance, whatever. He says, Nikki, I'm telling you two or three lessons. You do what I tell you. He goes, son, you already have. Uh, he goes, you already have a good grasp of what you're capable of doing. He goes, I can hear you have a powerful voice. He goes, you just need to learn how to control it and the breathing. He goes, and son, uh, he goes, I can. And I was like, and I'm sitting there and my head's spinning. Yeah. Maestro Kyle just told me he's going to, and then he tells me I have to get six weeks up front. I charge my students one hour a week, um, $60 an hour. And then four books that I asked my students to buy up front, $10 a book. So $40 plus $360, it's $400. I need $400 up front to start training you. And then $360 every six weeks after that. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, man. He's, and I just dropped my head and I'm like, oh. and he's like, Nikki. And he gave me the greatest advice. He says, not everyone can afford me. I get that. He says, but please don't let this stop you. Find someone you can't afford. Have them train you, teach you how to breathe. How you know? And so I did, and it made a huge difference. Wow, an enormous difference. But but yeah. So I sat down with Maestro Kyle. So fast forward here, um, uh, damn near uh, almost a year later. Um, I'm at my apartment, and a girl I'm dating. I tell her, you know, she wants. She lives in Everett. I live in West Seattle, off Pigeon Hill, right there, in Del, off of Del Ridge. And um, she says, hey, me and my girlfriend are going to go into Seattle to Pioneer Square to see uh, some bands play. Uh, can I come see you? Sure. I'll leave the apartment door unlocked. So it's about 2.30. I've gone to school that night. Um, I went to National Broadcasting School. <laughs> Anyhow, um, yeah, I went to National Broadcasting School. <laughs> I was going to say that the voice just stuck <laughs> out there. All of a sudden. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I got to school and there was a guy there that was a taxi driver that had uh, picked up a bunch of Humboldt weed from his friend in Northern Cal. So I picked up an ounce of it and um, it's in my apartment under the couch and it's just reeking. And I hear the door, I, I hear the noise and the door open and I hear, oh, this Nikki? Yeah, I know this Nikki. Hell, everybody knows this Nikki. He goes, hey, Nikki, wake up. And I'm, I'm open my eyes and look at long, blonde, stringy hair in my face. And I'm like, hey, what's up, Jerry? And it's Jerry Cantrell from Alice in Chains. And apparently the girl I'm, I'm seeing, her girlfriend and Jerry had hooked up. And so he's wanting to hang out. And so he comes over and she's like, oh, God, good. You do know him? Because she goes, I was like, oh, God, I'm bringing this guy over. And like, Nikki's going to be so pissed. And I'm like, no, I know Jerry. No, he's totally cool, man. And he's like, I got some beer. I got a half rack of some Budweiser. You want to drink? I was like, yeah, in a minute. Let me wake up. I said, hey, I got an ounce of Humboldt from a guy at school tonight. You want to smoke? He's like, yeah. So I bring out the weed. We're smoking. And uh, this band back then from Texas called Dangerous Toys is out. And uh I love their shit. So I put the tape in. I start singing it. And Jerry looks at me and he's like, Nick, are you in a band? And I go, no, brother, I'm looking for one. Because the thing with Frank Parker and I, it didn't work out. He and I ended up getting a fist fight on Al a long story. I'll tell you another time. <laughs> we, 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 we called. We, actually, we, we made peace at the, uh, the Cult and Metallica show at Seattle Center. Um, when they did that show in uh, 89, where they filmed that show, uh, filmed both shows and made a video out of it. Yeah, yeah, I was at both those shows. It was like <laughs> August 29th and 30th, I believe, were the dates, uh, 89. But anyhow, yeah, yeah this, we, we buried the hatchet, as it were, but we got in a big old brawl right in the middle of fucking Alki in front of Pepperdox. It was crazy. Blood and fucking rocker hair going everywhere. <laughs> 
But uh, Jerry's listening to me sing Dangerous Toys album. And this is, understand, this is 2 33 o'clock in the morning, smoking weed, drinking beer, just woke up, and I'm just nailing it. I'm just, nah, 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 the baby, the baby. And he's like, Nick, you're in a band. I'm like, no, but I'm looking for one, bro. I go, I'm tired of sitting around watching everybody else do it. And he goes, well, I'm going to start looking around and asking, dude. He goes, because fuck, dude, you need to be in a band. You got a voice, dude. You can sing. And I'm like, thanks, man. I'm like, yeah, I'd kind of like to, <laughs> you know. He says, well, I'm going to keep my ear open. If I hear anything, brother, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell him about you. I was like, all right. So, you know, we hang out and everything. <clears throat> Jerry takes off. A couple months go by, and Dangerous Toys and L.A. Guns come to town on tour. And they're playing uh, Paramount. I'm at school. I get out of school, ride my motorcycle up the hill. I go in. I'm standing over in the beer section. The show hasn't started yet. Got a VIP door to the right. General Mission doors in the middle there. Everybody, you've been to the Paramount. You know what I'm talking about. Um, and the beer area. I don't know if the beer area is still there or not, but um, there was a beer section. You go in there and buy beer. And So I go in there, and I'm having a pre-show beer, and all of a sudden, the VIP door swings open, and Jerry Cantrell has the guitarist from Dangerous Toys in tow, and he's energetically pointing at me going, that's him right there. That's him. <laughs> and... Um, so he brings me over. He's like, Nikki, do you know who this is? And I'm like, yeah, you're Danny, uh, you're a guitar player from Dangerous Toys. And of course, you know, our egos are, yeah. are what they are, ladies and gentlemen. If, if you recognize us, it, trust me, people, w musicians, artists, whomever, people love it when people recognize them because it, you know, it's like, oh my God, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of famous. Yeah, so yeah. I'm going to call my mom. Um, <laughs> mama, guess what? But, um. He pulls me up. He's like, "Do you, Nicky, know this is?" I'm like, "Yeah, you're Danny from uh, Guitars from uh, Dangerous Toys." He's like, "Oh, you know who you are." I go, "Yeah, man, I love you guys." I go, "I love your guys' music, man." He goes, "Yeah, that's what Jerry was saying." He says, "You're pretty good at singing." And Jerry turned to him and goes, "The fuck I did." He goes, "This guy is fucking incredible, dude." He goes, "You should have heard him singing your shit." He's like, "He's better than your singer." <laughs> And I'm like, Jerry, no, 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 no. And, and, like, and he goes, turns to me, he goes, no, Nikki, you're going to be famous someday, brother. You fucking got it, dude. You've got the voice. You've got the personality, dude. Because I'm telling you, you're going to be famous. He goes, and I'm still looking for you. I'm still trying to find a man. I'm like, <laughs> I'm just staring at him big eyes like, okay. And I'm like, and Danny said something to me. He's like, so is he right? And I said, look, Danny, I said, I, I believe in karma. And I said, and I would never, ever try to disrespect your singer. I go, the whole reason I like you guys' stuff is because of him and his voice. I go, you know, I go, I can sound just like him. I said, but for a moment, let me put my humility aside. And I, and I looked him right in the eye and I said, if your singer fucks up, I can replace him yesterday. I'm a better singer and performer than he'll ever hope to be. I said, but like I said, and I go back to like, but I believe in karma, so I would never try to step on him. I said, but if he fucks up, I'm here. He goes, Jerry, know how to find you? I go, Jerry looks, he goes, oh, yeah. He goes, everybody knows Nikki. He goes, yeah. I, he goes, I know where he lives. And he goes, yeah, we can find Nikki. It's like, all right, man. You know, I was like, that just happened. So I'm standing there, and Jerry goes, all right, Nikki, I'll see you later. Go, all right, Jerry. And walk off back to the VIP tour. But about that time, I'm noticing there's this other dude over there with long blonde hair standing, and he's kind of watching the whole interaction. And he comes walking over. He says, hey, brother, you know Jerry? I was like, yeah. He goes, what's your name? I go, Nikki. He goes, you're a musician? I go, yeah, I'm a singer. He goes, oh, right on. He goes, yeah, I'm a singer too. I go, I know. You're Mike Howe from Metal Church. And he goes, <laughs> you know me? I go, yeah, dude. I go, fuck, Metal Church is the shit. I go, you guys are awesome. I go, we were rocking out to your band in, uh, in Phoenix when I was living down there. And he's like, oh, right on. He goes, well, hey, man, what are you doing? You done with your beer? I was like, yeah. He goes, fuck, come on. He just takes me over to the VIP section, tells the guy, door goes, he's with me. Opens the door, <laughs> walks me down. <laughs> I meet, so uh, Ann and Nancy are there. Um, you know who I'm referring to, okay? Uh, Jeff Tate, and I'd already met Jeff at some other function through a friend when she had me MC her fashion show. Um, and Jeff was there up in Linwood, the Linwood Steakhouse. And so I had already met him, but... Um, I know I'll wrap it up. No, here no, quick. you're okay. I'm, and I'm and I, I, uh, I looked over and I'm like, "Hey, Jeff," and he's like, "Oh, hey, hey, man," and you know, um, and I, Ann and Nancy, they're like, "Oh," and Mike's like, "Hey, everybody, this is Nikki. He's like friends with Jerry," <laughs> like, <you know? laughs> and everybody's just like, "Oh, hey, hi," and I'm like, "Hi," he goes, "Man, this is Ann and Nancy." I'm just like looking at him like, 
Yeah, dude, trust me. I know who the fuck they are. <laughs> like, you know, this is 1989, bro. This is December, literally the end of December 1989. So we're all much younger and, um, you know, prettier. Um, <laughs> um, for sure. But uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm down there and it's just fucking surreal. Like, I'm hanging out and there's like, there's Mother Love Bone and there's Soundgarden and there's Alice in Chains and there's Heart and there's Queensryche and there's Metal Church and I'm, I'm just looking around and there's just, there's probably more bands there that, you know, famous Seattle bands or whatever. Um, it was just crazy how easy it was to just cohabitate and hang out with these guys. For like, sure. But somebody told me a long time ago, they said, no, dude, you have a knack of finding that. You have that energy about you where a fucking rock singer like Mike Howe wants to drag you down into the VIP pit to meet everybody down there. And the kind of guy that Jerry Cantrell wants to try to pimp off to. Like, you have that energy. And I'm like, yeah, God, I hope I never lose that. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, because it's gotten me pretty far, man. Like, you know, it's definitely uh, it's definitely opened up people's hearts and minds and doors for me. Um, whatever I'm doing, I hope it's right. And I, 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 like I said, let's go back. And I was supposed to preempt everything I said today. All praise and glory to God. God has a plan, yep. and I am the proof of that plan. Amen. So, yeah, man, that's uh, that, that's that story. Um, God. And then when I was working at KZOK, just a quick circular, I was working at KZOK um, way back, and right when I was doing the Water Boys, and Steve Slayton comes out, and this is when the old uh, KZOK was over at uh, Dexter and Denny behind the Rasmataz, and I was doing production work with Darren Erickson. Um, I was coming in on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays after work, and putting in a couple hours, you know, hanging out and uh get to know everybody so i got to know steve slayton and gary crow and uh maynard and uh, robin and um mike jones who came over from kisw so mike and i are out in the parking lot on a friday and uh steve steve slayton saw my show like i'd, I'd been there for a couple of months you know and then all of a sudden i come in one friday after doing the show on thursday you know so i'd been there wednesday did the show thursday come in friday and i come around the cubicle and i hear steve slayton going have you guys seen nick's show Oh my God, he's good. Like those guys are so funny. He goes, and he was rattling off stats. Like I had to go and check. He was like on right. He was right about all of them. He goes, I had no idea the guy was such a good. And I come around the corner and I'm like, really, Steve? And I'm like, give him a look. Like I'm like, and I'm just like, I'm giddy because I'm like, this is a fucking Seattle rock and roll radio legend. And he's like, he's just sitting here blowing me up yeah. about my my the Water Boys. You know, I'm like, holy shit, dude, this yeah. is so Nick. You want to come on? And so he had me on his show a couple of times to do like Mariners updates yeah. and everything, you know. And dude, it was the most wonderful thing because I'm like, I was just, I was in my element, you know what yes. I mean? I'm like, I'm here with this rock and roll legend, and he liked what I did so much that he brought me down. I'm like, that's what I dreamed of. Like, somebody's going to see that this is what I can do this and right. I can do it well. And they're going to say, Hey man, we want to pay you to do that. And unfortunately it didn't happen. It's Fox right. sports went and took my shit. And stuff. Right. Like, but, uh, but it taught me a lesson, but, um, anyhow, Mike Jones and I are out there in the KZOK parking lot and, uh, shooting hoops on a Friday. And, uh, here comes Steve out of the building with, uh, Ann and Nancy and their manager from the, the, uh, love mongers. And they had just done an acoustic set in the studio and promoting a show that they were going to have at, I don't know, Emerald Queen or someplace, whatever. And Steve goes over, he goes, hey, uh, he goes, and Nancy goes, you guys know Mike? And Mike's like, hey, guys, you know, Mike Jones, he's in radio. He's met him plenty of times. So, he, you know, they're old friends. Me, on the other hand, I, I, I was going to say, I met you guys years ago at the Paramount. You know, uh, Mike Howell from Metal Church <laughs> introduced me to you. But before I could say anything, like, uh, Steve goes, this is Nick. He's uh, he's our production intern here. Um, but he also produces and hosts a television show on cable access. Um, and I'm like, hi. And I shake hands with Ann. And I go to shake hands with Nancy. And when I went to shake, she grabbed my hand and she pulls my arm and she takes her other hand and she goes, oh, and she runs her nails down my arm over my tattoo. She goes, that is such beautiful work. And she goes, oh, it's just lovely. And she looks up at me and I'm just staring at her with these <laughs> big deer in the headlight eyes. And she goes, she goes, oh, I'm so sorry. Is it, I should have asked, is it okay to touch you? And I go, I just uh -huh. nod like a little schoolboy, like, uh-huh. And I go, I go, 
I was listening to you um in the GT my mom's GTO 69 GTO in <laughs> Richmond when I was like six seven years old and now I'm standing here and you're touching me I'm like yeah. if I died today it would be okay and she started <laughs> laughing and uh but yeah I just I I, I didn't have the wherewithal to tell them after that because I wasn't expecting her to grab my arm and I just forgot everything. It's like, oh, I met you guys back in '89 at yeah. the Paramount, you know, and just whatever, dude. Just she's touching me, right? <laughs> like Nancy <laughs> Wilson is fondling me, you know. Anne Rice did the same damn thing, really. Anne Rice, yes, the the Queen of the Damned. I uh, I stood in line for five and a half hours down there at, for at Elliott Bay Bookstore. I think this was 95, 1995. And uh, Mem Knock the Devil had just come out. She was doing her tour. She comes up in the limo, goes downstairs, whatever. I bike messenger all day, come down, stand in line with the people. Five and a half hours. You get to know people. Sure. So we get down. I get up to her. She takes my arm. And she's just like, I looked at her. I said, I said, Madam Rice, five and a half hours in the line every moment for this moment right now <laughs> and i said i said it is such a pleasure and honor to meet you and she's like and i had uh the uh witches of oh god the the may the mayfair witches my ex-wife she had this original print um so uh i had ann sign that and of course she had to get them not the devil sign so i had her sign that but anyhow and she grabs my arm and she goes that is such lovely work I don't know what it is with these famous women and their fingernails down my tattoos, but I was just like, damn. And all of a sudden, the people behind me that I've been talking to, they're like, they're like, all right, Nick, come on. The rest of us want to meet her too. And I turn and I'm like, hey, 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 show some respect. The queen of the dam is fondling me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, man, I've, like I said, I've, I've had a pretty charmed existence. And for some reason, God keeps me around because he has a plan. Um, and yeah. I think that's... I think that's good for this week. That's this good for this week. I'm telling you, it's good. It's fun. I got so much more I want to tell you guys, I but get, his wife wants to barbecue, and barbecue. there's just there's just only so much I know you guys can tolerate yeah. in, in one podcast session. So I'm trying yeah. to break this shit up. Yeah, these and hours keep it interesting. A little over an hour is perfect. It gets All right. those those commutes for those people, and then we'll be back in a few weeks. We'll follow up with another. Uh, uh, and and then you're going to be out of town. So I'm or do you want to announce that to everyone that you're going to be out of oh, town? Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> please, man. My address is blah, please come take everything. Um, I hide the money. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I uh, uh, my sister is getting married in uh, mid May, okay. so I'll be back there for that. My daughter is having my second grandson in mid to late May, um, so it's going to be a it's going to be a, a wonderful, blessed month of May, but. Uh, I'm going to try to bring, like I was talking to Travis earlier, folks, um, I'm going to try to have more topical conversations in the future and not just about my past. I mean, granted, I can sit here and tell stories of my life, you know, for hours on end, but I come in here sometimes before he starts recording and just all the shit in the world. I watch a lot of podcasts. I listen to a lot of people left, right, center. Um, I'm pretty tuned in i told him i'm like i'm i'm like tattooed alex jones um i said so uh you know i'm gonna come in here in, in the coming weeks and hopefully instead of just uh filling your ears with old you know battles you know tales of mine um we can start having some uh more relevant topical up-to-date conversations and you know obviously we're living in a very politically charged time right now right and the election's coming up and the big bad orange man is coming back and you know there's there's communists and and you know terrorists and you know dogs and cats living together <laughs> um so uh yeah it's it's just it's hard for me to not have an opinion on shit when i'm dialed into it every day and i actually care i you know i know a lot of people out there don't have time um, or are just so overwhelmed and, and burned out by it. And I get that. But uh, I'm just one of those warriors, man. I'm always going to know. I always want to know what the enemy is up to yeah. um, because they're never, ever going to catch me slipping. I, I made that mistake years ago and I learned from it and I will not do it again. The uh, the, the practices, the placements, the uh, the itinerary and agenda of the enemy will always be known to me. And um I'm always prepared, so you know you won't catch me slipping. Always strapped, strapped, always. All right. So that's it, man. Hey, thanks for having me again, brother. Yeah, no, it. no problem. Thank you guys for listening. Tell your friends, and then also if you 
made it this far, congratulations to you. That means you you are you, you don't have a short attention span. That means <laughs> you can get you can get lost in thought, and that's awesome. And please send questions, message us. Uh, even, I'm telling you this, even one message, like I think Homer had said, ten out of ten, best episode. Uh, you know, I, he loved it. So, um, oh, which one was that? I, I think I think I screenshot it and sent it to you. Oh, that oh that one. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Wow. Yeah. Th- yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, absolutely love it. Um, one even one message goes a long way, and it's that ego thing you're talking about a little bit. You know, it's yeah, just, yeah, but, but, yeah. But it's I the, mean, it's not an ego thing, not but, so but much. It, it's just more of the. Uh, Okay, it, appreciation. appreciation. I, I think that was the yeah. word I was going to say. Is the appreciate some somebody appreciates yeah. what I'm putting out, right. so it's not a, this effort of futility or this right. wasted, you know, yeah. breath. So, but these I will be played that. for the for, for till the end of time because they're on MP3s. Yes. I'm going to give them. I want to email them to you as well, so that you have them handy in case anything were to happen oh, to oh, oh, anything you. out yeah, there. Okay, you All can right. have it on there for and pass yeah. it down to grandsons that are getting yeah. born. Yeah, that and would be all awesome. That, that would be so. wonderful. Yeah. All right, everyone, have a great week. Thanks for listening, and talk to you guys soon. Oh, and uh, oh, hey, yeah. oh, real quick, yeah. I, I, just uh, shout out a shout to my, out. Yeah, yeah, shout, shout yeah. Out. I want to give a shout out to my little sister Maria. Uh, well, Maria Custolo, about to be uh, Niefeld, Niefeld. I'm sorry, Dan. I don't know if I'm saying it right, but I'm, either way. But uh, to Maria, my little sister, I love you, and to her uh, husband to be Dan. I will be there with my pimping garden attire <laughs> suit on hopefully awesome. hopefully hopefully i don't take away too much attention from the lovely couple <laughs> but uh i can't promise anything but yeah i love you guys um shout out to uh all the rest of my family and to all the people on uh facebook and wherever that uh, i have pimped this show too yes. thank you for checking it out and listen i really appreciate you guys and i appreciate you giving uh, travis some uh, love and some feedback so thank you thank you thank hope you. to hear see you uh, or talk to you or fill your ears again here soon all right peace, peace. Get up. welcome to the greatest of the greatest a podcast that you never knew you needed with interviews from people you have never met, or maybe you have once or twice, asking questions and knowing more than you want to know about them, you are listening to